Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome. This is Craig Thomas, your host on Much More in Medicine, part of Think Tech Hawaii's live stream series and assisted by, today by our engineer, Ray. Joining me today are Dr. Tom Forney and Ryan Chaplick, uh, both from Wahiwa General. Tom is Chief of Staff and Ryan is the uh, Communications Director. Thank you both for coming. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. So Wahiwa has a dear place in my heart. Uh, there were a lot of reasons, honestly, uh, not the least of which is it's the first place I worked, the very first shift I worked after finishing residency. I'll never forget it. <laughs> I walked into the place and uh, the doctor signing out is in a hurry to leave and he says, oh, and by the way, there's a code coming in off the, we just got the Medicom. I'm like, ah, why don't you stay? You know, let's do this together the first time, which we did. Um, but that was my very first shift, and uh, all doctors remember the first place they worked in transitioning out of residency because it's where you really learn how to become an independent doctor. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, but I'd picked a great place. It's uh, a community hospital. It means that you get a broad spectrum of conditions to treat. They, they say emergency medicine is the uh, specialist in the first hour of everything. And at Wahiwa, everything is very large. Mm -hmm. uh, I had gunshot wounds, I've yeah. had complicated deliveries, I've had little kids doing all sorts of things that they shouldn't have tried. Um, and I've spent time at the bedside of uh, the father of one of our attending doctors who's now retired who was passing slowly, and I spent the night with uh, that doctor and his father, who uh, had been a cane worker at Wailua Sugar his oh. entire life. And so I was, I heard the stories of what it was like growing up with your dad uh, working the sugar cane. That was back in the days where they laid the train tracks out in the field so that uh, they could, you know, harvest the cane and load it in the track, and every, uh, uh, Farmer was responsible for his plot. They planted it, they watered it, they tended it. In the end, they cut off the water, burned it, yeah. cut it down, and put it in the cart. And uh, I'll always remember that night. And so Wahiwa, for me, has been a fantastic place to work. And uh, I'm not blind to the challenges of small community hospitals. It's been a struggle for many of them across the, the nation, to be yeah. honest. Uh, but still, the best care is that care, in my opinion, which is the right care delivered as close as possible to home. And often that's at a place like Wahiwa. Yeah, Sometimes good. places like Wahiwa, and we work in community hospitals across the state, uh, so there are many other uh, Wahiwas in similar roles. Uh, they start the care, they do the right thing, and then they pick the appropriate tertiary center to pass it on, whether it's for pediatrics or burns or trauma. We have different centers for all those things. Um, so Tom, like me, you uh, started early in your career out of residency at Wahiwa, which I think was a decade ago, more or less? Yeah, so I started a little over 10 years ago now. And yeah, similar story, first shift ever. Um, walk into Wahiwa for a night shift. And uh, it, was, it was an interesting and memorable night. Um, Tell me about it. Oh, <laughs> um, so it's just all of a sudden making decisions on your own. Yep. You have this patient that you normally would admit in, uh, in your training. You then call the, the doctor, get the patient admitted. They say, no, I, I think they're It'll fine. They'll be We're, fine. Just send them home. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and so then you have to make, make that decision of whether yeah. they go home or not. Um, and there's, there's no backup. There's no one to turn around and be like, hey, what, what should I do? Because um, yeah. it's, as you mentioned, a, a small uh, independent facility. Um, and the, as, as the night wore on, there was many of those decisions that mm -hmm. had to be made. And uh, um, I survived. I stuck with it. And uh, it has been a wonderful 10 plus years. Um, nice. It is by far my, uh, my favorite preferred site to work at this point. Nice. Yeah. So what you're describing, oh, incidentally, my first shift. It's also a night shift. What a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, anybody listening, you can imagine that the senior doctors back in the day tended to get the day shifts, and uh, some of us got the night shifts. But anyway, no, it's the big transition from residency, where you are generally surrounded by specialists, and uh, you have faculty uh, kind of 
to consult, to uh, you're it. And this is true whether you go to a small community hospital or even a tertiary center. In the end, the big change is, it's up to you. And that's, that's a big move. The other interesting thing about emergency medicine, uh, just so people know, it's fascinating. The variety is Absolutely. omnipresent. Every emergency doctor I've ever talked to agrees with this statement, which is something to the effect of every shift, I see something a bit different than anything I've ever seen before, or at least that I can remember. And since I've seen, I'm not sure how many, uh, more than, well more than 70,000 patients, the fact that every shift something a bit different arrives that requires, you know, I wonder if we can send this one home, or mm. I wonder if this test might be helpful in this case, or harmful. Tests are not always helpful. And that's both uh, unsettling and fantastic because it makes it always interesting and challenging. So for me, it's been great. Yeah, and it's, uh, you, you get the opportunity, you're, uh you know, you don't have uh, orthopedics standing by, so if, if there's a broken bone, you're the guy who fixes it, or exactly. or whatever it is. It's your 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 skill set has to be larger um, and and more refined than if you're working at a big academic center. Yeah, so that's it's, true. It's a, it's a wonderful place to be. I think so too. And then you get to decide: should this go on, or should this come in, or should this go home, or how do we do the follow-up? So it's it's interesting. Briefly, the history of Wahiwa is uh, it started in World War II. I think there's a pretty cool black and white photo uh, showing the entrance to the first, the first uh, hospital. It uh, was an old school building. And in fact, there's a different photo we're not going to show that shows the school sign down and the hospital <laughs> sign up, which is kind of cool. Anyway, that was the start of the hospital. Then uh, it evolved. Uh, it was part of a big building spree across the country. Mm -hmm. In the mid-60s, they built a whole bunch of hospitals that are different sizes but look a lot like Wahiwa. And uh, it was a pretty classic community hospital. Uh, started then. When I came, it was uh, kind of the way community hospitals were then. The uh, emergency department was by now professionally staffed, but the admitting doctors all worked in the community. They'd come in and round. It had a very vibrant community, of a medical community. Uh, and over time, um, as specialties and diagnostic uh, capabilities evolved in medicine, uh, roles of hospitals changed, and hospitals changed a lot. And in hospitals like Wahiwa, uh, the, the emergency department really is the focus. It's 90% uh, plus, it, probably close to 100% of all admissions, and this is true across the state, um, go through the emergency department. Uh, in addition, the emergency department, which sees somewhere in the 20,000 plus range of patients per year, uh, is what most people see at the hospital. Yeah. Uh, there, of course, is, uh, and Brian's going to share with us some of the other services, but uh, there's an inpatient uh, facility, there's intensive care, and there's a uh, skilled nursing facility uh, adjacent to it. So it yeah. provides a spectrum of services. Um, and the fantastic thing about the emergency department, other than it's a great place to work and we have really wonderful patients, uh, is it got rebuilt a couple years ago. Yeah. And Tom, you were there for that. Yeah, it's, it's uh, well, and to add on your point of, of the changing of medicine, when I started 10 years ago, primary doctors still admitted their own patients. I would call them up for the admission. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting, now that just doesn't happen anymore. A whole new specialty has been created um, in kind of that short time span of, of hospitalists. Yep. Um, and so it's just the continuing evolution of... It's changed everything. Um, and that's happened statewide. Yeah. Uh, it's much uh, analogous to the uh, way HEPA, our emergency group, started at Wahiwa in the early 70s. Before that, it was staffed by ophthalmologists, pediatricians, yeah. whoever came to the ER, somebody came in and saw them. And it was decided, I think just in time, that that was not the way to do it. And truthfully, uh, sort of the same things happened with inpatient care, which is it's become a defined specialty on its own, and it's recognized that inpatient and outpatient care really is a different skill set, and uh, sort of made the role of the emergency department even more interesting because we now deal with 
outpatient specialists and inpatient specialists. So, and your mission about the new department, it's fantastic. It's opened uh, maybe three years or so ago now. Um, and previously, the department was seven beds, which is woefully too small. Mm -hmm. um, and more interestingly, the last time it was renovated, I think, was in the late 70s. Yeah, 78, I believe, and before so, I arrived. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, there's some wonderful things about it. It was very small and cozy. Um, <laughs> I, um, but now it's, it's a beautiful, state-of-the-art, 16-bed, private room um, department that is honestly a, a real pleasure to work in every day. Yeah. So, you know, and it's interesting to note, though, and I know you folks have been talking about the emergency department. I've actually seen it evolve as a patient. I mean, we've talked about this. The scars on my head, I think you were actually the one that sold me up when I had my surfing accidents. But to see the evolution of the emergency department, um, and like Dr. Forney had mentioned, $3.5 million renovation. We've expanded from seven, seven beds to 16 beds, all private patient rooms. We have the two trauma rooms, the PD room, the p pediatric trauma room, and the adult trauma room. It's And, and then... You had mentioned also, Dr. Thomas, if you look at where Wahi was located geographically, we get the gamut. And you had mentioned we get gunshot um, wounds, you'll get stab wounds, you'll get all the bad car accident trauma victims off of Kaku Nohoa. I know you, you will stabilize them, they'll transfer them onto Queens, but we're initially stopped and you get all the drowning victims off the North Shore. We really see the widest variety, I think, in terms of patient care for the emergency room um, that not a lot of the hospitals across the state will see or on Oahu. Um, so to mention the relationship that the hospital has with the Hawaii Emergency Physicians Association um, is important. And that, that's a really important relationship to see that the physicians in there are going to provide that higher level of care and the care that you're going to need. And so that, that, that's a really important point to make. Other than the renovations, don't get me wrong. When I went in there, it was, I don't even think there were curtains at the time. It was just three beds, and uh, I was just sitting in there, looking around, watching everybody else, and you came and sold me up, and uh, I was in and out real quick. Well, you know, the, the old department was overdue, shall we yeah. say. Uh, the care was good, and honestly, the, the sort of uh, ambiance was chaotic, but, but great. People, people appreciated everyone was working hard, and it, it, it worked well. It was kind of interesting to see uh, people from the mainland come in, because yeah. they would come in and their eyes would get kind of big, because they didn't know that emergency departments like that still existed. So we were <laughs> overdue. Uh, as to your point about the uh, service area, uh, central Oahu North Shore is about a geographic third of the island. Yeah. Now, it's by no means a third of the population. But it's a big population. Mm -hmm. I think it's on the order of 125,000. It uh, uh, depends where you kind of figure out the, the yeah, borders. The boundaries, yeah. uh, but uh, it's big, and it gets really diverse things. Yeah. And uh, we have any number of business opportunities in our thing, uh, in our area. Besides the military base, we have skydivers. We have big wave surfers. Yeah. We have the Kahuku motocross track. Exactly. Plus, yeah. everything else everybody does. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a great place. Um, we're going to go to break soon. Um, so why don't we think about uh, where we're going to be going in the next 2019. You know, 2019 <laughs> next is week. Next week. about <laughs> here. Uh, so where we're at now, where we're going in 2019, and then maybe a little vision for the future beyond that. Any thoughts before we go to break? Uh, nothing at this point. Well, I mean, for myself, it's just that letting people know that Wahiwa General Hospital, we're open. We're here serving the public. We've next year, 2019, we're going to be celebrating 75 years. It's a big deal for the hospital. It's a big deal for the community. It's a big deal for all of our patients and our employees as well. So, but we can expand on that when we come back. Yeah. Agreed. So, uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you in a minute. Uh, this is Craig Thomas, your host on Much More on Medicine with Tom Forney and Brian Cheplick from Wahiwa General Hospital. Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome a studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you 
every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Craig Thomas. Uh, joining me are Tom Forney and Brian Cheplick from Wahiwa Hospital. This is Much More in Medicine. And before the break, we were talking sort of the history, what it was like to work there in the past and now. I think now it's a good time to talk about some of the awards, some of the current projects and focus. And um, Tom, there's recently uh, Wahiwa Hospital won a stroke award. Do you want to tell how that happened and maybe describe a little of the telestroke uh, infrastructure and how we're tied in with uh, specialists downtown and maybe even a mention of the next project, the uh, large vessel occlusion uh, operation, which is going to be rolling out this spring. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, there's a, a collaborative uh, working relationship with the Primary Stroke Center on Island. And so through telemedicine, we're able to have access to uh, neurointensivists. And, and so, and the emergency room will coordinate with them to both uh, initially evaluate the patient and determine do they need to have specific uh, stroke medicine now or not. And so w through that collaborative relationship, we've been able uh, to obtain multiple awards. Uh, uh, last year was the gold award. This year was the gold plus award. And essentially that's for continuing uh, to give uh, excellent stroke care for our patients. And, and so fortunately it's a fantastic team both through Wahiwa ED, but on the inpatient side as well as physical therapy, uh, but then also through our, our collaborative relationship with the, the stroke specialist in town. And, yeah, exactly, and it's it was a team effort. It's a uh, local team in the ED, and then the uh, remote uh, consultant via telemedicine. And uh, stroke care is evolving. It looks like uh, plucking a clot out of a large vessel in a, a stroke is occasionally helpful. This is a dangerous, tricky thing, and there will be only one place in the state that does it. And the role of community hospitals is to figure out who might be a candidate. Yeah, um, yeah no, that's, that's, that's an excellent point. Um, stroke care is changing. Uh, you now can potentially get um, treatment for your stroke up to 24 hours out. And so if a patient is having stroke or stroke-like symptoms, it's important to get it checked out. Um, even if you're outside of that uh, traditional three or six hour window, um, it's getting punched out, uh, pushed out to even 24 hours now. Right, and the change actually is in, instead of or in addition to the uh, clot breaking medicine, as I said, they actually use a catheter and go in and grab the clot. This is only done in a very few patients and it's tricky and risky, but uh, Wahiwa is part of it and uh, it's exciting. Well, I think it's in, important to note just real quickly, I mean, Dr. Forney had touched on it, this is the third year that we've actually received the award, and uh, we got the Gold Plus Award this year. So every year, there's been advancements in the, the care that Wahiwa General, the doctors and nurses, the ED techs have been providing, so much so that the Vice President for the American Heart and American Stroke Association from the West Coast flew down to actually physically present the award to the staff at Wahiwa General. So that, that was a big deal, not only for the hospital, but for them. I mean, because they've seen over a three-year period, we have really made... Uh, stroke treatment of important, the level of care that we give, and, and that shows in the type of care that we give and the awards that we're receiving. So I just wanted to point that out real quickly. It was a big deal. It really was. And, I, I, and the staff take pride in the work that they do, and, uh, and the community should be assured that the level of care they're going to get is going to be the best if they come to Wahiwa General. Absolutely. Uh, the hospital is also involved in a number of other, other health-related activities and sort of community leadership activities. Do you want to run through those, Brian? I think. Oh, gosh. There's, I mean, everything from our radiology to our um, imaging department, uh, we talk about this. Um, you know, people drive past the hospital. They may go someplace else to get their mammograms. We did a big push in October for the breast cancer awareness. Our imaging technology is 3D technology. It's the latest technology that you can find here on the island in the state. Um, 
we have our long-term care, like you had talked about, our skilled nursing facility, our um, advanced medical surgical unit. I mean, we have a plethora of services that not a lot of people know about, and that's part of the reason why I have, my history is not as long with the hospital. I've only been there, I just made seven months, but my history does run deep because I've used the hospital quite a bit, the services at the hospital, and I've lived and worked in the community down in Haliva and Wailua, so I, the hospital is near and dear to my heart. So it's getting the word out to p let people know that we do have these services. You, it's quality care close to home. You don't need to be driving. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the other facilities, but wouldn't you rather do it closer to home where you don't have to get stuck in traffic, Longer wait times, two hours here, well, our wait times are not that long at all. And you can schedule an appointment. I know some, I don't want to say this all the time, it's not a universal thing, but you can call up, and if you need a mammogram, you might even be able to come in that day. So um, it's just creating that awareness to let people know that those are the services that we're providing. Actually, one thing working in community hospitals uh, and with patients and their families, I think it really is true. If you can receive the appropriate level of care, yeah. and community hospitals can provide a large spectrum of services. They can't do everything. Yeah. If you can get the appropriate level of care, it's better to be in your community. Yes. The hospital is actually involved in other sorts of community activities, too. I, you know, <laughs> actually, I really love Wahiwa Town, yeah. and uh, I think we have a few slides showing some activities the hospital engaged in. Uh, Brian, you want yeah, to run no, through those? You're, you're absolutely right. That, that's an important point, because you know, the, the hospital has been, is a pillar of this community. Like I said, it's, it's going to be 75 years that this hospital has been open next year. We also do a lot of community outreach. Um, people come in and volunteer. I, I think we have some of the photos up. We recently had the Hilo High School cheerleaders into our long-term care. Um, they came over here to do, play in the Division I uh, high school football championship. Uh, there was another facility that was going to provide them some hours that kind of uh, got pushed off. So they asked if they could come out. We said, yeah, please do. They did a great job decorating the tree and actually doing some cheers for our long-term care residents. It was wonderful. And then we also do community outreach myself. Um, you, I'm Dr. Forney. I know I've asked some of our nurses. We go out on the events in the community, whether they're career fairs, holiday fairs, parades. I mean, we want to up our presence in the community, not only there in Wahiwa, but in Haleiwa, Wailua, Mililani, Waipahu, to let people know that, hey, we are here, this is what we're here for, and giving back to the community, I think, is really important. There's one thing if you come to the hospital, um, usually you have a medical emergency going on, but we try to be a little bit proactive. Get out there, let people know, hey, these are the things that you can be to be proactive to take care of your health. So although we would like you to come to the hospital, we'd rather you be healthy, healthy and never need to come to the hospital. So that's what we try and do, put the word out. You know, health is really the goal. Health care is not the goal. Often to have good health, you need health care. But if you don't have good health practices and good engagement in your community mm. and appropriate behavior, a little exercise, not too much food, something I struggle with, uh, good uh, connections with your community and family, you can have all the health care in the world, mm. and you will not be healthy. So uh, I'm really appreciative of the hospital being engaged in other aspects and involvement in uh, central Oahu and the North Shore, mm. where, where there's actually, a, it's a fascinating place. There are a gamut of people. There are people who lived in Wahiwa Town their whole life, and it's been generations. And there's surfers from Brazil, just up the, <laughs> yeah. you know, and everything in between. Yeah. Uh, so it's a great thing. Uh, Tom or Brian doesn't matter. Let's talk about some services that are being augmented at the hospital. Uh, what's going on for 2019. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and kind of to segue into that, um, this is a, uh, thanks to, to Brian and everyone who's involved with the hospital for getting the word out that um, a few years ago, the hospital um, uh, appeared to be struggling and there's talk of, of you know, closing or, or, or anything. And uh, it's, it's not, it's, things have, uh, there's really been a dramatic turnaround over the last three plus years and the hospital's not closing, they're doing well. And, as you mentioned, uh, starting to expand service lines. Um, probably of, of the most significance is uh, um, working on building out uh, another specialty clinic. Uh, there's a number of specialists who are, are looking at wanting to come to Wahiwa and provide their specialty services um, uh, to Wahiwa and the patients who live in both Central Oahu and North Shore. Um, and so that's coming out over the, the coming months of finalizing the 
the building and the renovations so that we can uh, provide extra services uh, for all of our patients in the community. That's cool. So uh, for people, so just to be clear, what we're talking about is the hospital would have a designated space. It already has one, but it's yeah. building out another mm -hmm. uh, for specialists. And we could talk about who they, what various specialists it might be. Um, cardiology, I think, will be expanded. I'm not sure about GI. Uh, there may be a place for dermatology, dermatology. ortho. So there's, there's honestly, it's, uh, we've, we've been pleasantly surprised at how many specialists are and have approached Wahiwa and said, hey, I, I want to bring my care out to Wahiwa. Let's, uh, let's figure out how to make that happen. So it's, it's been wonderful. That's exciting. Yeah, no, we, we brought, um, <clears throat> actually, I think they had a group of physicians that came out and visited last week. We just wanted to kind of show them the space because as you, said, as you talked about a little bit earlier, do we have the space for it? We actually do. We have the space allocated for it already at the hospital. It's a matter of making it conducive so that the physicians can provide the level of care they need to. But thankfully, we have the space available. Um, I think they like what they saw. Um, it's a matter of getting all the ducks in a row. It takes a little while, as you know. Things can be a little bit slow, but just making sure that we do it the right way so that we provide the right type of care the community needs. And so that, that, that um, hopefully will be happening pretty soon, pretty quickly. I think it's exciting. It's along the theme of you know, the best care is the right care closest possible to home. So the fact that uh, people can see their specialist, uh -huh. uh, get cared for at Wahiwa, and if they need a procedure that's not available at Wahiwa, they have a connection to a doctor in town. Uh, I know that, uh, Tom, you're also involved in some care uh, initiatives and standardizations across the state, actually. Uh, Wahiwa is one of the leaders in these. I think it's exciting. I think that uh, as we move into the future, keeping in mind the goal is health, not necessarily more health care, mm -hmm. and that in general having it as close as possible by providers you know uh, is ideal. Uh, any last thoughts? I, I guess the only thing that I would like to add, <laughs> I know it sounds so self-serving, but we didn't really mention the military community. We are so close to Schofield, mm -hmm. and we really need to be cognizant of our relationship mm -hmm to our military family. And so uh, I know it was important that for a little while we were not a TRICARE provider, which is the military medical insurance. We are now. And so there is no copay or anything like that. You can utilize our services. We encourage the military. Now, we're not saying don't go to Tripler, but if we're so close and we can provide the care that they need, then by all means, please, because the experience that you're going to get with our hospital, with our doctors and our nurses is, like I said, the best care possible. So by all means, please. And then you don't have to worry about that. I know that copay thing was a kind of a stickler, um, but now we're a TRICARE provider. Yeah, thanks for getting that sorted out and reminding me. Uh, I've always enjoyed taking care of our folks, uh, both the active duty and the dependents. Yeah. Um, well, with that, I'd like to thank you both for joining us. Uh, it's uh, wonderful to have a picture of a community hospital and uh, it's been a fantastic place for me to work. Uh, this is Craig Thomas, your host on Much More Medicine with Ryan and Tom from Wahiwa. Thanks for joining us.